Body parts can be a significant danger for certain animals, so much so that it might cost them their lives. Deep into the woods, animals get injured almost on a daily basis, sometimes due to attacks by other animals and sometimes due to their own body parts. There are many ways an animal can cause self-harm. From body features to innate habits, here are dangerous animal body parts that can kill them. Sheep have been around for a long time, and they are very familiar and useful animals thanks to their thick wool coats. Humans have been using their wool for a whole lot of things, but the sheep pay a big price for this. You see, the thick wool and coat is a great idea in winter, but as soon as summer hits, keeping them on starts to become a seriously bad idea. It starts to get hot and itchy. For sheep, this is their life, unless they get sheared regularly. Back in the days when sheep used to wander in the wild alone, they had the ability to shed their wool themselves. But due to years of human intervention and genetic modification, they've lost that natural ability. It's quite unusual for an animal to rely on external shedding to have a healthy life. If they are not sheared regularly, their quality of life downgrades significantly. The thick, overgrown wool layer gathers manure and other liquid waste over time, which can lead to serious infections. One other observation by North Dakota State University, according to their fact sheet on sheep shearing, is that a healthy layer of wool also helps regulate their body temperature. The huge amount of wool puts a lot of weight on the sheep and they face difficulty moving freely. Some sheep that grow hair instead of wool still have the ability to shed automatically, and some wild sheep rub themselves against trees to shed themselves, but for domesticated sheep, humans have to shear them. The interesting fact is that sheep shearing is only required once a year, and it's best to do it in winter during mid or late spring. That way the sheep can stay warm during the winter and cool during the summer. Shearing is a completely pain-free process for the animal, just like getting a haircut. There's not much that can hurt them if the shearing is done by professionals. Shearers use a shearing machine or a set of sheep shears or clippers. The process doesn't require much equipment, but it does require a very steady and experienced set of hands to keep the animal calm during this yearly haircut. Fangs are very useful tools for many carnivores, and it also gives them an intimidating look. But when pigs sport extremely long fangs, it's quite a rare sight. Meet Babirusa, or deer pig, which belongs to the swine family but has similar features to a deer. It's just that the Babirusas have tusks instead of antlers. These unusual pigs are originally from the Indonesian islands. Their tusks make them look like they are friends with the dinosaurs. Only the mare babarusas have these long canine teeth. Apart from looking dope, these tusks also give the pig an advantage in intraspecific fighting. The upper tusks help with the defense, while the lower ones take care of the offense. This effective weapon comes at the price though. Much like the horns in the Argali sheep, these tusks also sometimes pierce the flesh of the pig. The tusks keep growing upward, and if the babarusas don't grind their fangs, it keeps growing to the point where it can enter its own skull. The pig may look scary because of this deadly body part, but it's actually not an aggressive animal. The babarusa doesn't have a nose bone, so it doesn't dig the mud with its nose as most other swine do. They mainly eat leaves, roots, and fruits. These pigs are now facing the risk of getting extinct. Three species of the pig are labeled vulnerable by International Union for Conservation of Nature and another one is labeled endangered, which has a population of 1,000. The reasons for their extinction include trapping, hunting, and habitat loss caused by logging and other agricultural activities. Horses and horseshoes have become inseparable terms since humans have learned to use the animals for their benefit. Horseshoes are even considered good luck to some. These nifty little metal shoes have more purpose than just bringing good luck though. They are important for maintaining a horse's health, but these same horseshoes can become a source of pain and suffering if they're not installed correctly. The process of putting the shoes on the horse looks quite scary and painful. The shoes are nailed into the hooves after all. The amazing fact is, despite looking like a painful process, if fitted properly, the shoes don't hurt at all. The hooves are somewhat like human nails in nature. It's painless if you cut properly and painful if you go too deep into the nail. In fact, if a horse doesn't have shoes on, it can cause even more pain and can potentially become dangerous for your horse. It all depends on how the horse is ridden. The heavier the horses carry, the more possibility of causing damage to the horse's bare hooves. So installing the horseshoes properly and regular visits from the farrier for hoof care is an essential part of the care routine for your horse. As for the donkeys, it's not about what they carry, but where they're kept. Donkey hooves are well evolved to survive in dry weather, and they are great at absorbing water from the ground. In short, donkey hooves are much more efficient than horses in surviving dry weather and carrying weights. 
The problem occurs when the donkeys are kept in moist weather, like the one in the UK. As their hooves absorb water very quickly, their foot can become soft and that can cause a number of foot diseases. To avoid that situation, the younger donkeys need a foot trim every 6 to 10 weeks, and they should be good to go. As for the older donkeys, extra care should be taken, because they have difficulty lifting their limbs. While trimming the older ones, the limbs should be kept as low as possible. All dead and discolored parts of the hooves should be removed to allow the healthy and new parts to grow in. Also, a healthy amount of sun exposure is necessary to avoid major infections. Another thing to keep in mind to ensure that the donkey doesn't face major health issues is keeping them on the clean and dry ground, especially after they've been treated. Antlers are one of the main features that make deer look so magnificent. Apart from contributing to its looks, the antlers also serve as great weapons against rivals and hunters. No one witnessed it better than Dean Lennon. Lennon has been a deer hunter since he was 15 years old, who has seen some scenes that are hard to forget. One day, he was hunting as usual when he ran into two bucks in the middle of a fight. Their antlers were seriously entangled, and the most dangerous body parts ended up taking the lives of both deer. The whole condition of the area left little to the imagination. The area of about 30 feet in diameter was completely destroyed, with the surrounding brush looking like someone threw it in a wood chipper due to the vicious fight between the deer. One of the rivals ended up being eaten by the coyotes. They had eaten up most of the buck, leaving the head alone. The deer looked like it had been deceased for at least three days. Another factor that makes the antlers on the deer particularly dangerous is how it gets affected by every hit or minor injury the deer takes. The buck's physical condition plays a huge role in how fast the antlers will shed. Take the reproductive organ injury for example. If the buck takes an injury there, the testosterone level will decline significantly, which will contribute to the shedding of the antlers. Other injuries such as from fighting, a vehicle collision, or a non-lethal hit from a bow or firearm can also result in reduced testosterone levels and force early antler shedding. Malnutrition or starvation can also induce shedding. The most dramatic real-life example of that can be seen in this clip taken by two guys. They were rowing the forest on the last day of the hunting season when they finally spotted the strange animal. One of them took a 45-yard shot with his bow, and as soon as the arrow hit the buck, its antlers instantly fell off. That wasn't something the hunter was expecting after the arrow hit the buck. But if you hit the like and subscribe buttons, our channel will definitely meet all the expectations of your curious mind. So don't forget to do that to watch more interesting videos just like this one. Tortoises have houses just like humans. In many cartoons, the tortoise shell has been portrayed as a decent home of the cute animal, and for good reasons. Despite being practically defenseless against predators, the tortoise still manages to survive for 80 to 150 years, and it's all thanks to the shell. Without the shell, the tortoise would not survive even a fraction of that time because of its slow and timid nature, particularly in wildlife. So any injury to the shell can cause pretty serious complications for the animal. It will make them way easier to prey on. Especially birds are infamous for the notorious technique to turn the tortoise into a meal. They usually drop the tortoise from high up in the sky, which cracks the shell so the bird can reach its soft tissue inside. Fortunately or unfortunately, the fall terminates the animal way before the bird starts drilling into its body. That said, the shell is pretty hard and durable, and it's not easy to break it. Only the grit and tenacity of an appropriate flying predator can break or injure the shell. It's also very unlikely for the tortoise to cause any damage to its shell by itself. The shell is the animal feature that helps the tortoise survive in adverse environments, and it heals itself for the most part. It takes them about 12 weeks to heal a wound completely. One might think that the bigger the wound, the longer it takes to heal, but it's not the case. However, the smaller wounds are easier to take care of, meaning they require less dressing and they have a lower chance of getting infected. When taking care of a wound, the main thing to keep in mind is making sure not to trap the infection in with the fixture on the shell. The main risks for the shell are the predators, and if the tortoise is a domestic pet, then dog bites or lawnmower blades can also be a threat. Which do you think is more likely to happen, the dog bite or the lawnmower blade injury? Let us know in the comments. We've all heard about cannibalism, whether it's from a psychopathic movie or a documentary about some of the jungle tribes that used to practice it. However, if you thought cannibalism only existed in humans, or it only happens when one member of the same species eats the other, get ready to be surprised. Let us introduce you to the concept of auto-cannibalism in snakes. Snakes are one of the most deadly animals that are well known for their predatory nature. They devour a wide variety of small animals and birds and their eggs. It's a quite common scene. What's not common is the dangerous creature going full-on Ouroboros on itself and starting to eat its own tail. Unlike the mythical creature, this bizarre behavior has nothing to do with self-renewal and has a lot more to do with its innate nature. Snakes are cold-blooded animals, which means they lack the ability to regulate their body temperature like most animals do. They can't sweat to cool themselves down, and so they need to be kept in a cool spot to keep them healthy and oriented. Now what does this have to do with their auto-cannibalism? 
Well, if the snake gets too hot, they get disoriented and confused. This contributes to the amped up metabolism and a false sense of hunger. At that moment, they'll eat whatever they see first, and since the captive snakes mostly stay alone, the first thing they see is their own tail. That's when they mistake it for prey and start eating themselves. Another reason why the snakes might attack themselves is the diminished eyesight when they shed and again mistaking their tail as prey. If you ever see your pet snake self-cannibalizing, instantly turn the heating system and lamps off to allow it to cool down. Sometimes after they've cooled, they let go of their tails themselves, but in most cases, the only solution is an emergency visit to the vet. That's because the snakes have an instinct to trap food and guide it inside, which makes it hard for them to let go after they've started eating. Google has come as a blessing for the curious minds of people, and one of the most popular topics that people are curious about is if a fish can drown in the water or not. Fish can drown in the water. To understand how, we first need to understand what drowning actually implies. It means to suffocate underwater because of the lack of oxygen. Just like humans, fish also require oxygen to breathe, and they also dispose of carbon dioxide. We humans do that throughout the lungs, and fish do it through their gills. As fish are cold-blooded animals, they require less oxygen than humans and other warm-blooded animals. Fish need about two parts per million or more oxygen level in a water body to survive. They pull the oxygen in through their gills, and they also push the carbon dioxide out in the same manner. If a fish is in a still place, like in an aquarium with other fish, the oxygen level in the water will drop and the carbon dioxide level will go up, which will end the lifespan of the fish. This happens because of the lack of air circulation in the aquarium. Another way the gills affect the fish is if they're injured. Just like humans and other land animals need healthy lungs to breathe properly, the fish need healthy gills to breathe and survive. One other breathing technique fish use is the ram ventilation. This means the fish swim upwards super fast, keeping their mouth open, which forces the water down from the mouth to the gills. If they're interrupted in the middle of this journey, it will abruptly stop the flow of oxygen, and in turn, it'll end in their demise. So to keep your fish healthy, make sure to give them a proper amount of water space in a well-ventilated aquarium. Sloths are arguably nature's slowest animals. Their cute appearance and innocent nature make them adorable to almost everyone. But being a slow animal living in the wilderness isn't a cakewalk, and it comes with a lot of challenges. An average adult sloth can reach up to 0.27 kilometers per hour. For better understanding, compare it to the average human walking speed, which is about 5 kilometers per hour. Take a look at this clip for a proper example of how the sloth's slow speed can affect it. The man here stopped the traffic by parking his car in the middle of the road to help the animal cross the road. When the sloth finished its lengthy jaywalk, the kind person helped it up to a tree trunk to hold onto and climb up. If it wasn't for the kind man, the animal would have faced an early demise by a car hitting it, and this is just the tip of the iceberg of problems the slow speed brings the sloth. Sloths usually defecate and urinate once a week. So every week it slowly climbs down from the canopy to the forest floor to do its business. Saying that a forest floor is a dangerous place, even for an animal that runs or walks fast, let alone a slow one that can't even crawl. The sloth is basically exposed to every predator that walks around the jungle, and their misery doesn't end there. Since the sloths respond to nature's call only once a week, they face severe constipation. It takes them a significant amount of time to finish doing their business, and it's not only because they're slow. For sloths, every trip to this forest floor washroom is like giving birth. The sloth dung is usually one long piece that looks like a rotten banana in size, shape, and color. According to a sloth biologist, the sloth loses up to one-third of its body weight after defecating properly. She even weighed one chunk of waste and it was over two pounds. Their weekly trip to the ground to defecate is filled with danger as they can't run or crawl if any animal attacks them. The scientists are still confused about why the sloths take such a huge risk, but a study has suggested it may be because of the symbiotic relationship the animals have with the tiny creatures calling their hair home sweet home. One of the things living in their hair is a type of potentially nutritious algae that may benefit from the journey to the ground. But the scientists can't say for sure why exactly the sloth takes such a risk just to respond to nature's call. Maybe it gets bored staying up in the tree all the time? Or perhaps, unlike birds, these well-mannered animals are careful not to drop their waste on someone. Which do you think might be the reason? Let us know in the comments below! Now, let's talk about one potentially deadly human body part if it's injured. We're talking about our taste organ, the tongue. The tongue is filled with blood vessels and nerves, which is why it hurts so bad if you accidentally bite even a little bit of it. Most of the large arteries are located at the root or the deep part of our tongue. If by any chance it gets severely bitten or broken, it will result in a massive amount of blood loss. Humans have about 4 to 6 liters of blood in their bodies. The highest amount of blood loss the body can compensate for is 30%. If the acute bleeding causes more blood loss than that, it is life-threatening. For a better visual, take a 500 milliliter bottle for example. 
If someone loses more than three bottles worth of blood, there is a risk of them passing away. The lack of blood causes insufficient oxygen supply to the brain and the heart. That's when the body goes into a hypoxic state. If this state remains for a certain amount of time, the organs start to fail one after another, resulting in the demise of the person. But the good news is, it's almost impossible to lose that amount of blood just by accidentally biting a small part of your tongue. That's only possible in the movies so far. Not to mention biting your tongue off isn't that easy either. Even if someone does bite their tongue off, it'll be some time before they actually be in a life-threatening situation. The blood will start to clot after a bit, making the bleeding slow down. Snakes are infamous for their potent venoms. They usually deliver it to their prey through their fangs. They pierce the skin and hold the biting position, allowing the poison to flow through the fangs into the muscle. But some snakes have a different method of doing it. They spit or eject venom instead. That's usually for their own defense against other attacks. If the snake is spitting the venom, then the venom is in the salivary gland of the reptile. Now, the question is, what happens if the snake accidentally swallows its own poison? The answer is nothing. You see, the main component of the venom is protein. For a protein venom to work on an animal body, it needs to be injected directly into the bloodstream or muscle. Ingesting it will deliver the venom to the stomach of the snake, where the stomach acid will break it down into its primary harmless forms. For this simple reason, swallowing the venom will not cause any adverse effect on the snake's body. On the other hand, if by any chance the venom enters the bloodstream or the muscle of the reptile, it will cause serious complications. This might happen if the snake bites itself. That's usually what happens when the snakes start to auto-cannibalize that we talked about previously. That's why their own venom can become deadly for them. Feathers and furs usually serve the purpose of protecting a certain bird or animal, but sometimes this protective animal body part can turn into the most dangerous one. There are quite a few complications that arise in hens and chickens regarding their feathers. Blood feathers doesn't mean what it sounds like. It's not a feather made of blood, but a condition that occurs pretty commonly in poultry. In a chicken coop, sometimes cannibalism can be noticed. Cannibalism means pecking, tearing, and consuming skin, tissue, or organs of flock mates and birds. With this natural trait in hens, some of them quickly lose feathers due to the pecking. When the new feather grows in, it kind of sits under the skin with active blood flow. Slowly, as the feather matures and gets to come out, the blood flow recedes back to the follicle. If the feather is pecked before it's matured, it can lead to heavy bleeding that might cause the chicken to pass away. Cannibalism can occur in all types of housing systems, including cages, floor pens, aviaries, and free-range systems. High temperature inside the housing system makes the hens uncomfortable and prone to pecking. Another time when the feathers don't exactly prove to be the best thing in the world is when they're attacked by predators like foxes, dogs, and cats. When a predator gets its hands on a chicken, in most cases, it tears the feathers off and leaves a trail of feathers behind. In rare cases, such as with certain large dog breeds, the chicken gets consumed whole without it plucking out the feathers. But for most cases, the feathers do get plucked out while the chicken is alive, which, as you can imagine, can be horribly painful. Humans have been experimenting with dog breeds for years, ranging from pugs to bulldogs. Some are selectively bred to have certain cute features, like short limbs, big eyes, a small mouth, jaw, etc. But going against nature can sometimes have undesired consequences. These animal crossings can cause some health issues in specific breeds. For example, the overlapping teeth increases the chance of tooth decay and gum disease. The heavy skin folds on the face cause cherry eyes and eye ulcers that can sometimes lead to removing the eye entirely. The biggest difficulty is faced by the flat-faced canines with short snouts. For starters, they struggle to eat and swallow properly, and they're always out of breath. Because of their short snouts, they always snort and sneeze. The second factor is that the pups are almost always delivered by C-section, because of their significantly large head compared to their birth canal. If an English and French Bulldog or a Boston Terrier gives birth without human assistance, it most often results in a very painful demise. Also, these canines with the shortest noses face many neurological problems because of their compressed skulls. Needless to say, their narrow and short airway cause oxygen deficit in the dog, resulting in breathing and heart problems. Brachycephalic syndrome is a very common and serious disease in short-faced dogs. If you still decide to get these cute canines, be assured that you'll be spending a lot of money on taking care of them. One other thing to consider here is that they have a way shorter lifespan than regular dogs. For these reasons, many animal activists and veterinarians have spoken against the breeders who breed these poor creatures just for quick profit, knowing very well that they'll face many health complications. They have urged the general people not to purchase these designer breeds, to put a stop to this animal cruelty, not to mention they can be super expensive as well. It's not only humans that sometimes consider taking their own lives getting frustrated with the daily stress and trauma. Animals consider it too. 
Meet Tarsier, a nocturnal creature that's so introverted and shy, even the tiniest human interaction can encourage them to take their lives. If you stumble upon one of these creatures, their unusual appearance will instantly stop you in your tracks. Tarsiers have the most distinctive bug eyes found in animals. They are super sensitive to sharp lights or sudden noises. Coming closely in contact with a human or a camera flash or getting manhandled is literally all it takes to strike extreme anxiety in these small leaping primates. When they get nervous, they start banging their soft heads on something hard and end up cracking their skull because of how thin their cranium is. Keeping them captive is no good either. If you put them in a cage, they'll get anxious real quick and start banging their heads against the metal bar and take their lives. So it's super important not to spook these cute little creatures. They have been the center of attention for many animal lovers, and many go watch them on various islands of Southeast Asia, including the Philippines. When doing so, there's a set of rules that the tourists have to follow, which include not getting too close to them, not taking pictures with flashes on, not making loud noises, and most importantly, not touching them under any circumstance. According to a Filipino conservationist known as the Tarsier Man, if you touch, they die. This is especially dangerous since the 13 species of Tarsier are already facing the threat of getting extinct. So when you go to watch them, make sure not to challenge this cute little fella to come out of his comfort zone. Sometimes being in the comfort zone is the best way for some to survive. Horns are one of the most effective body parts any dangerous animal can have. They can be used as weapons against rivals, but sometimes the weapon can also turn against the one holding it. That's pretty much the case with the Argali sheep. They are a kind of mountain sheep that are well known for their meat. These sheep are significantly bigger than the regular domesticated sheep and can grow up to one meter in height and weigh hundreds of kilograms. There's one other feature that makes the sheep different than others, and that's their huge spiral horns and the tragic fate these bring to the animal. Argali sheep stay in groups, and their horns can be an indication of whether a sheep is a male or female. Male Argalis have much bigger horns than their female counterparts. The female ones sometimes don't even have horns. The male sheep use their spiral corkscrew-shaped horns to compete with other males. The horns grow bigger as they get older and sometimes pierce the cheeks of the sheep. It's the prime example of animal body parts causing harm to their bearers. The weapon that this most dangerous animal uses to fight others slowly turns into a deadly threat for themselves. Honeybee stings are most people's nightmares because of the pain they cause. The stings are also not the best thing that happens to the honeybees either. A bee usually stings when it considers someone a threat to its hive. Apart from that, it's rare for the bees to sting anyone unless they step on them or tamper with them. There's a reason why the little honey makers don't sting unless they absolutely have to. The reason is when it stings someone, the strange creature passes away itself. The honeybee stingers are made of two barbed lancets, and when the bee stings anyone, it can't pull the stinger out. So it has to leave it behind, and since it's attached to the digestive tract, the bee also leaves a part of the digestive tract, muscles, and nerves with it. With this huge rupture on the stomach, it passes away soon after. That's why the bees don't use this deadly animal part of theirs in vain. There is one advantage in it for the bees though. After it leaves the stinger inside, it can release the venom up to several minutes later. The cluster of nerve cells coordinates the muscles of the stinger left behind, while the barbed shafts rub back and forth which makes the stinger dig deeper into the skin, and the muscular valves pump toxins from an attached venom sac to deliver them into the wound, making the pain linger much longer. Some people have the misconception that one shouldn't try to take the stinger out immediately. That's not true at all. The sooner someone can remove it from their skin, the less pain and damage it'll cause. Even though this unusual fact of the bee's life can seem pretty sad and unfortunate, it serves an evolutionary purpose. The fact is, the worker bees don't reproduce, so the only way they can ensure their legacy goes on is by defending the hive and the reproductive bees even if that costs them their lives. Which body parts shocked you the most? Have you seen anything like this in the past? Let us know in the comments section. Like always, if you enjoyed it, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comments section. To keep up to date with all of our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on to never miss a thing. Until next time, do take good care of yourself.